So now for the basics of population growth. Demography is the study of populations, and some of it involves math techniques to predict population growth. This field can involve study in the field, natural populations, and in the laboratory, too, to look at why populations increase and decrease, and what are the effects of, dense, of crowding density dependence on birth and death rates. As our human population has grown, there's been a big effect on the planet Earth, one of the most significant developments in the Earth's history. Early population growth was quite slow. A million individuals a million years ago, and even at the beginning of the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago, there were only 3 to 5 million individuals on the planet. But over time, you can see what's happened in recent, the last few thousand years. There has been exponential growth. The population now <clears throat> of the earth measures in the billions, helped by the Industrial Revolution, allowing us to make much more food more efficiently, and major scientific and medical advances as well. From 10,000 years ago to the start of the 18th century, population on Earth increased a hundred times. But in the past 300 years, population has increased from 300 million to 6 billion, a 20-fold increase. Actually, now the population is in excess of 7 billion. So this most recent doubling from 3 billion to 6 or 7 billion has taken place in the last 40 to 50 years. Sometimes it seems that we're close to the limit here on Earth. I know you may feel this when you drive to the university in the morning. And think about all the different ways in which you see that we're, things are getting crowded here on the earth. Has the human population grown beyond the ability of the earth to support it? People disagree on this point, but one thing's for sure that continued growth will further stress the living systems of the earth. So when will human population cease to grow? There are many unknowns, but the UN has estimated that human population will plateau at 9 billion, just a couple billion more than we are now. That's because it's very hard for populations to grow indefinitely without limits, but let's consider a population increasing in proportion to its size, kind of like a savings account that earns interest on the amount in there, at a 10% annual rate of increase. If we have a population of 100, that would be adding 10 individuals in a year. Or if there were 1,000 in our population, we'd add 100 in a year. So as years pass by, if the population grows without any limitations, it would this population would rapidly climb toward infinity. So this is unlimited growth. It can be described in two ways as exponential growth or geometric growth. There are two different models needed because some organisms reproduce continuously. That's how we can use the term exponential growth. And others are added at regular intervals, at discrete intervals, and so these pop those populations would show geometric growth if growing with no limits. The basic equations for population growth are simple. Big N, the number of individuals in a population sub t at time t, with t sub zero as the starting point, and the units of time are related to the kind of organism involved. It could be hours or days or years. So n at time t plus 1, the next time interval, is equal to the initial population size n plus the number of births, b, 
minus D, the number of deaths. And you can also consider the number of individuals that immigrate, come in, or emigrate, leave the population. B and D can be broken down into little b, the birth rate, times the population size, and little d times the population size. The numbers of births and deaths are those instantaneous rates times the size of the population. So we can define little r <clears throat> as the birth rate minus the death rate, so it is a rate itself, the intrinsic rate of natural increase. And the change in population size with respect to time, dn dt, that should be a little d on the bottom of that um, derivative, is equal to little r times the population size. And on this figure, you can see with time on the x-axis, size on the y-axis, the population increasing exponentially. And that can be described with the equation n at times t is equal to n at initials time times e to the rt power, e the base of the natural logarithm. So you can see that the population won't grow if either the initial size is zero or the growth rate, the rate of increase is zero. So where did that E come from for exponential population growth? Well, if we just integrate the both, both sides of the basic equation, we'll get n at times t on the left and the initial population size n at times zero times e to the rt power. e has a value of about 2.7. When r is greater than 0, population increases exponentially. If it's less than 0, it declines. This model has assumptions that there's no immigration or emigration. Also, the birth rate and death rate are constant. The population is not structured genetically or by age or size. There's no time lags, continuous growth, and unlimited resources. So all of these expectations are not really part of the real world. But all populations do have this potential for exponential increase, and they may increase that way if circumstances are right. Geometric growth comes from seasonal patterns of population increase and decrease. Many animals, especially in temperate or boreal areas, hibernate in the winter, reproduce in the spring. So the equation describing their growth, instead of little r, involves lambda. n at times t plus 1 is equal to n at time t times lambda. Lambda is the ratio of the population at any time to that one time earlier, so that lambda equals n at times t plus 1 over n at times t equals 0. The California quail, for example, gets new individuals in the population each reproductive season once per year. So to figure out population growth over many time intervals, you can multiply the original population size by the geometric growth rate, lambda, for the appropriate number of intervals. So for example, a population growing at a geometric rate of 50% per year, in other words, lambda would equal 1.5, an initial population of 100 would grow to 5,767 in 10 years. That's assuming everybody born stays around forever. So both these models describe the same data equally well, and they're related because lambda is e to the r power, and the natural log of lambda is equal to r. And if we look at graphs of these two, functions over time, geometric growth by intervals follows 
what looks like an exponential model, really, the smoother curve for continuous population growth to the right. So just to remind you, the relationship between the intrinsic or exponential and finite or geometric rates of increase, little r is equal to the natural log of lambda. And lambda is e to the power of little r, the intrinsic rate of increase. So populations grow when lambda is greater than 1 or little r is greater than 0. Constant when lambda is 1 or little r is equal to 0. And decline when lambda is less than 1 but greater than 0 or little r is less than 0. And here that's shown in this graphic with bars below showing the different values of growth rates, geometric or an exponential, that give decreasing, constant, or increasing population size. In populations, it's not uncommon that birth and death rates are different with the age of individuals in the population. So we have to consider contributions of different aged individuals separately. And these age-specific schedules of survival and fecundity let us project the population size and age structure into the future. We'll look at that with life tables in a little while. But if in a population things are constant, Eventually, the population will reach a stable age distribution with each age class representing a constant percentage of the total population. So under a stable age distribution, every age class grows or declines at the same rate, lambda, and the population as a whole also grows at this constant rate, the same lambda. So in the figure on the left, Populations often bounce around, but after a while, if conditions of the environment are fairly constant, a stable age distribution is reached. The, the graph on the right shows values of lambda bouncing around for a while and then eventually becoming constant, not only for the whole population, but for every age class. It's interesting to compare the age distributions of developing countries versus a developed country. On the left is Sweden, a country in northern Europe with a lot of wealth and stability. And more of the individuals in the population are older than in a developing country population where the greatest number of individuals are young. And this comes from in the developing world, probability of dying at a younger age is greater, so fewer individuals reach old age.